This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 3113, Rejecting Consumer Norms Changed My Financial Life Forever, by Lisa Harrison of madmoneymonster.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator. Usually, on Sundays, I share an extra episode from another podcast at our Optimal Network. And today's comes from Optimal Finance Daily. You can find Optimal Finance Daily wherever you're listening to this. And with that, let's get right to the bonus episode and Diana's commentary as we optimize your life. Rejecting Consumer Norms Changed My Financial Life Forever by Lisa Harrison of madmoneymonster.com. Up until a few years ago, I was pretty much normal when it came to following consumer norms. Let's see, I had car debt, student loans, credit cards, and a hefty mortgage to boot. That all changed when I decided to take charge of my money, reject consumer norms, and change my financial family tree forever. Rejecting consumer norms didn't come easily. Rejecting consumer norms I had bought into as a child didn't come easily. After all, I wanted all the markers of success I didn't have growing up. I wanted flashy clothes, a fancy car, and most of all, I wanted the big house. And for the most part, I was able to check all of those boxes off my list by the time I hit 30 years old. Then, long story short, my relationship fell apart and I lost it all. I had to restart my entire life from the ground up and the inside out. At that point, I didn't really know who I was. I had an internal image of myself that I presented to the world predicated on the things that I had acquired. Bottom line, my stuff ruled my life. You might think that restarting my life at 30 with absolutely nothing meant hitting rock bottom, but you would be wrong. It meant hitting an emotional rock bottom. It fundamentally changed me on an emotional level, but not on a financial one. My desire to achieve everything I had before the breakup, like flashy clothes, a fancy car, and a big house, was even stronger. After the breakup, I needed to prove to myself, my ex, and the world that I could acquire all of those markers of success on my own. Consumer norms all the way. It took me a few years, but eventually I was living the consumerism dream again. But this time, I was doing it on my own. My stupid post-breakup financial moves. All retirement savings were suspended. I needed that money to buy stuff. I purchased flashy clothes, enjoyed expensive dinners, and threw lavish parties. My luxury 4x4 SUV was not on the chopping block. That was statusy. It had to stay. I rented an apartment even though I had a rental home my mom was living in. I purchased a second home with only $200 in my bank account after closing. It wasn't that I had no insight into the world of finances. Quite the contrary. I had always been motivated to save and change the financial landscape I grew up in, hence all the good money moves I made as a very young adult. Immediately upon graduating from college, I was contributing a significant amount to my 401k, maxing out an IRA, and had purchased a rental property. The problem was that I had crossed a few wires in my head and was confusing what it meant to be successful. And unfortunately, the FIRE community wasn't as mainstream then as it is today. I struggled with projecting an image of wealth as opposed to actually building it, as many, many people do. Despite having a high salary during the above fiasco, I continued to repeat a litany of lies to myself and others saying that I couldn't save more, invest for my future, etc. Why? Because I was alone. I didn't have a partner or husband with an income like so many other women at my age. If I had that, I could have it all. I could have the image of success and actual money in the bank. Scared straight, hitting financial rock bottom. Then it happened. I met someone and we clicked. We got married and we continued to live the life I had been living alone. We were both chasing the image of success rather than actual success. This meant expensive dinners out and shopping for a bigger house. We finally hit financial rock bottom together when we nearly purchased that big house we couldn't comfortably afford. That big house was the very last thing I wanted under my belt to prove my worth. In the end, we decided that panic attacks and night sweats over the expense didn't justify the purchase. We walked, and we're so happy we did. It was at that moment that we rebooted our financial lives and rededicated ourselves to changing our financial family tree. 
retraining our financial brains. After the near suicidal purchase of that big house, it didn't take us long to retrain our financial brains. We found the FIRE community and a plethora of personal finance blogs that spoke to us. We were able to see clearly and realize what it actually meant to build wealth and be successful. We even figured out our net worth. It wasn't stunning, but at least it wasn't negative. Our financial motivation switched from embracing consumer norms to rejecting them in exchange for hefty investing and a more carefree lifestyle. We realized we didn't need all the stuff that society tells us are markers of wealth, and we were finally relieved and happy. Rejecting a life of consumption for a life of frugality has helped us tremendously along the way. These days, we're happy with Sunday hikes, spaghetti dinners, and playing board games. It's a stark contrast from the life we'd been living, but it's so much more enjoyable. And the peace of mind that comes along with knowing we have plenty of financial backing should something go awry is one of the best feelings I've ever experienced. You just listened to the post titled, Rejecting Consumer Norms Changed My Financial Life Forever by Lisa Harrison of madmoneymonster.com. We've heard from a lot of amazing people on this podcast, but if you're like me, you wanna go deeper. So where can you go to learn from the most remarkable people? That's Masterclass. Masterclass offers unlimited access to intimate one-on-one classes with over 180 world-class instructors, plus every new membership comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. There are over 200 classes to pick from with new classes added every month, like John Kabat-Zinn's, He's a mindfulness expert who teaches you how to incorporate meditation into your everyday life. I've loved his class. It's really helped me to hone my meditation skills, especially when I'm out and experience stressful situations and don't have the time or space to have a proper meditation session. I feel that thanks to his class, I've really been able to stay more composed no matter what's happening. And right now, our listeners will get an additional 15% off an annual membership at masterclass.com old. Get 15% off right now at masterclass.com slash OLD, masterclass.com slash old. This article made me reflect on why we want the stuff we want. If no one was watching, how would we be spending our time and money? How do we know that our desires are really ours or if they're more rooted in what society tells us we should want? I suspect that many of us just want peace of mind. We want time to enjoy life and to love the people around us. But when we chase external markers of success by buying things we can't afford to impress people we might not even like, it can become a real distraction from the bigger picture. I like to joke that the key for me in building wealth is not looking like I have any money. No one would look at my 2010 Mazda 3 that I spent $6,000 on and think I'm killing it. But I don't concern myself with that. I'm looking at my net worth a lot more than I'm looking at my car. And I actually have an obnoxious bumper sticker on my car that says my other vehicle is a 401k. So it's not like I'm completely immune to this kind of posturing. There's a great book called The Millionaire Next Door, which is based on a long-term study of people who are actually wealthy. The main thing I got out of it is that many people who live luxurious lives are actually drowning in debt and have very little wealth. For those of us who want to become wealthy, it would benefit us to see through the smoke and mirrors that is consumerism and focus on saving and investing instead. That's a wrap for another Monday show. Have a great rest of your day and start to your week. And I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.